We know that the voice of the interpreter is important to how the listener perceives the message. Sometimes we might say, this interpreter is calm, when what we really mean is, this interpreter sounds calm. Equally, we might say, this interpreter is messy and indecisive, when in fact what we mean is this interpreter sounds messy and indecisive. And if we looked at a transcript of what they said, we might discover that they have more intellectual rigour than that bullshitter with the velvety voice. Naming no names. Sometimes students can feel a sense of overload when we point this out to them. At first I thought this was going to be like doing a translation, but just spoken. And then I realised what the challenges were for listening and speaking at the same time. And then my trainer said that the most important bit was actually the thinking in between the listening and the speaking, because otherwise I would end up parroting. And now I'm being told that I've also got to remember to speak in a nice voice. It's just too much. It is important for an interpreter, like anyone else, not to be underselling the product. You may know what you're talking about, but you also need to sound as though you know what you're talking about. Professional interpreters say that sometimes they feel under pressure, and if asked in which circumstances they find it hardest to maintain their focus and communicative inflection, very often they will mention speed. What is speed? It means many things to many people. But here's one core definition. Speed is the English slang term for methamphetamine, a potent drug which affects the nervous system and is banned in many countries. So why does speed affect interpreters? No, 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 I'm fine, thanks, really. It's just, you've got to keep up with the speaker somehow, haven't you? I mean, you've just got to, uh, that's all, you've just got to keep up with the speaker, haven't you? That's, uh, uh, that's all I was trying to do, really. <laughs> why do interpreters find it hard to keep up? As a trainer, I like to distinguish between speed and density. Students can learn to spot patterns and therefore identify redundancy. What we mean by this is that by analysing ideas, which is at the heart of all interpreting, they will soon be able to see when there is unnecessary verbiage, waffle, repetition, or saying the same thing twice, or paraphrasing saying something which is very similar but in a different form of expression, although basically it's the same idea underneath. We don't advocate omission, but rather communicating all the ideas, but more concisely. If a speaker is speaking naturally and using natural inflection patterns, they will generally be okay to interpret. A small minority of people can think very quickly and speak very concisely, and they are in the category which experts call an absolute flipping nightmare. But in most cases, when interpreters complain about the speed of a speech, there is some other factor at play. It may be that the interpreter is unfamiliar with the topic or cultural background. It may be that the speech is being read out. And or it may be that the speaker is speaking in a non-native language. Of course, there are many priorities in this area, and the one I would like to focus on at this stage is genetically modified orgasms. Uh, sorry, no, of course, <laughs> sorry, I meant to say genetically modified orgasms. I'm sorry, sorry obviously, I, I meant uh, NGOs. Let's take the second point I mentioned, non-native English. Intonation patterns in English are linked to meaning. They are what we use for emphasis and to guide listeners through the structure of our speeches. There are lots of signposts to give clues as to what is going on in a speech, which alert listeners, and that of course includes interpreters, appreciate. Why do you laugh? Before in my life there was much sadness, and now I want happiness but it is very odd. The content of the English might be fine. Your grammar and pronunciation may suffer only occasional lapses, but the rhythm of the speech may make it hard for your listeners, English native speakers or not, to follow your train of thought. If, on top of that, our communication skills are impeded because we're reading out a text, then 
we can have an even more severe form of this phenomenon. Good morning. I would like to tell you the interesting story of former Spanish Prime Minister José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero. He studied at the Universidad de León and created a new faction in the Partido de PSOE called Nueva Vía New Way, based on Tony Blair's Third Way Tercera Vía, y que es Alex Jodes no emite Nuevo Centro New Center. So interpreters complain a lot about speakers like these. You should hear the flack some public speakers come in for behind the protective glass screen of the booth. But contrary to what you might think when mixing with interpreters behind closed doors, public speakers are not there to give work to interpreters. Their sole purpose in life is not to give us an easy ride. Remember our overloaded student from earlier? Public speakers can feel the same pressure if we give them a hard time. Not. I was just submitting a paper in English, obviously, because that's the language of the international journal. And then they asked me if I'd mind presenting it in person. So obviously I was flattered, but a little bit nervous because I'm not used to that sort of thing. And uh, I thought, well, all the experts in my field are coming, so I'll have to make sure I use all the big words in the right places and get all the academic references right. In fact, probably better to have everything in front of me to be on the safe side, make sure I don't go off script. So I'll, I'll just read the whole thing out. And then they tell me that I've only got six minutes instead of 45 to make my presentation. So obviously I'll have to read it out a little bit faster. And then the day before the conference they tell me that I've got to bear in mind that they're interpreters as well and bear that in mind when I'm speaking. It's all too much. There's no magic formula. But remember, dear desperate students and colleagues who are feeling overwhelmed, one way of seeing our responsibility is that of putting our listeners in exactly the same position as those who understand the original language. So if the source language audience is struggling to follow, we don't really have such a difficult job to do after all, do we? So, ladies and gentlemen, just try to keep your noses clean and stay off the methamphetamine.